All right, it is your best mix of music, 98.4 Capital FM. I have two more questions for you. Yes. Um, one of which is, uh, how successful has the engagement with the Interior Ministry been to develop protocols for the arrest of the judges? Um, and then I'll ask you the last question, which is, uh, I'll save it till the end. So just uh, this question obviously is quite, quite, uh, it's quite, it's quite pr- prominent in the news right now, this, this topic. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that is also works in progress. Uh, like you know, uh, the arrests of two judges from their chambers raised a lot of concern, not only within the judiciary, uh, but also outside, uh, because it was felt like uh, this is uh, one agency overreaching with its power to intimidate and uh, to cause fear and uh, interfere with the independence of the judiciary, which is secured in the Constitution. Nobody can interfere with the independence of the judiciary. And therefore, I came out to say, look, um, we judges, magistrates, or even me, Chief Justice, we are not above the law. We are people who should be in the forefront to obey the law, to protect the law, to defend the law. And we are given that mandate by the Constitution. To defend our Constitution, to defend our human rights, to resolve disputes. Therefore, when you go in a commando style, raid a judge chamber, arrest them, take them to the police station, then uh, throw them in the cells among the people that they are dealing with. Are you engendering the confidence and the trust that the Constitution has given these people? So I said, look, we have to look at a judge as somebody who has two, uh, uh, allow me to call them personalities. The personality that guards the Constitution. The concern, you know, because they are carrying the office of the judge, but this is a human being. And then there is this human being also which is capable of uh, being in conflict with the law. Sure. Be it receiving a bribe, be it, uh, you know, uh, involving themselves in uh, assault, or be it even being drunk and disorderly. But now when you're dealing with this part of the judge, you have to be careful so that uh, you don't uh, treat them with such indignity that brings their entire office into disrepute that uh, causes uh, fear and despondency that uh, the judiciary is being hounded, the judiciary is being interfered with. Every Kenyan, every politician, every even the executive, they would want to have a very strong judiciary mm-hmm. that is respected, that is really the protector of the constitution, our democracy and our rule of law. So if they are in infraction of the code of conduct, the matter should go to the Judicial Service Commission. The Judicial Service Commission calls the judge or the magistrate. And if they see that actually somebody committed uh, an offense, then they have to answer to it. Sure. Like but everyone. Like, like everyone. anyone. Like everyone. And, and this, this but it's just a saving process, a dignified way so yes. that we don't undermine the trust and the dignity and the independence of the but judiciary. that dignity is should be afforded to every person that commits a crime. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Yes. And therefore, it can't just be a special case because we think or the authorities think that person is a criminal uh, the way we're treating people until they're proven guilt- guilty yes. is, is, is that go- that cuts across the entire population uh, 